If you're a SWAT officer, do not call yourself an operator. <laughs> okay, threw that in there. <laughs> hey, what's up, team? All right, today we're going to be doing a reaction video with Theo over at Combat Arms Channel once again. Today we're going to be doing a reaction video to Tier 1, 2, and 3 explanations in the military. In the military? What? Military. All right, so I think you guys are going to learn a whole lot of new stuff here. You guys are going to learn about units that you didn't think existed, maybe learn some new information. And some of you might be just surprised at who is a tier one and tier two actual unit. If you guys like this type of content, go ahead and click that like button. If you guys don't like it, go ahead and dislike the video. But let me know down below in the comments how I can fix or improve for your guys' entertainment. If you do want to stick around and see more stuff, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. We post two or three times a week. And if you want to stay around even more, feel free to check my other social medias. Nailed it. All right, I think we'll have a lot to say about this video. I think we will. <laughs> I think we most definitely will. The U.S. military units are broken down into three different tiers. Tiers 1, 2, and 3. Tier 3 units, also known as white elements, consist of entities such as the U.S. Army's 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions, Marine Corps Recon Battalions, Navy Marines, Air Force 142nd Fighter Wing, etc. So I'll say this doesn't really help explain so much because Tier 3 is very, very general. So if you go and try and compare Recon Marines to like this National Guard unit, the 142nd, they're probably going to get a little butt hurt. It's so. a National fucking Guard unit. Here's the thing too. It's not <laughs> mentioning all of Tier 3 right here. It, like Tier right. 3 is all of the larger fucking uh, like conventional like war fighting units and shit like that. So 10th Mountain's on here. Yeah, 101st, 82nd. There's a bunch of other fucking units. So basically they're just trying to pull in like larger elements to make it fucking sound cool in this video but there's a right. lot of tier three units go ahead and fucking google them it's not just these five yeah it's kind of just taking all these conventional combat sort of elements and then putting it on a tier so you can sort of start focusing it from there tier two units also known as gray elements consist of entities such as the navy seals navy swix <sighs> marine raiders air force combat Hell Wars, yeah yeah PJs, Ooh, Army pause it on Rangers, this at the end. Army Special Forces, Boom. Night Stalkers. Boom. No, so this Boom. is a Stalkers, yeah, yeah. This is a go, this is a good one. I'm gonna have to go or get these real, and see. Yeah. If they, don't get caught up in the colors, guys. I don't know what the fuck that is. If I'm being 100 percent honest with you, I know in the <laughs> Intel community we use colors <laughs> for very specific things because it has yeah. to do with different operations, which maybe it could. From the Intel's perspective, for me, it doesn't sound like that's really what they're talking about. But you have like white, gray, blah, 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 blah. If they want to say other shit mm -hmm. in here, we'll talk on it. But different types of scaled operations for certain things. Um, but tier tiers one, two, three, fairly simple. Um, they're hitting it really good. And guys, look at this. I don't think a lot of people in here know the that. Big boys. I want to know. Let me know down in the comments. How many of you are surprised that Navy SEALs... It's going to be all the five and seven year olds are tier two. <laughs> there you go. And how many of you are surprised that special forces and PJs and fucking everyone else is tier two? I want to know how many of you thought that special forces and SEALs were on the same level as Ranger Battalion? Because a lot mm -hmm. of people don't think that. They think they're a step below. But we always talk about it. I'm like, everyone is spread out, man. I'm like, everyone has a different mission. They are all tier two. But right. I, I really, I think this is good. What do you think? I think this is a good. I, I do think it's good. We're definitely bringing in like some key players here. So also let us know if you guys are surprised by any of these or if you don't know some of these because yeah. like the Night Stalkers aren't going to be totally popular with a lot of people. So Night Stalkers over here on the right. So that's uh, 160 is SOAR. Um, mm. If we want to do the broad term, they fly helicopters for all of these people. Okay. They do a lot of <laughs> aerial stuff. Yep. Some intel stuff for all of these units, okay? Then you've got um, Ranger Battalion. We It's very broad. You'll find it in either one of our videos. We've talked about Ranger Battalion. So United States Air Force, like, Combat Controller Party, JTACs, and, like, you know, TACPs, and, like, all that stuff. People making yeah, you'll calls, also, bombs. You'll see them hanging around with a lot of these guys as well. So these guys yeah. will intermix a lot. That's actually a good point. Um, like, like I said, this... Night Stalkers will support everybody. Rangers will not. Uh, he said, you know, United States Air Force, like the Combat Controller Party, will support all, uh, you know, Ranger Battalion. Um, not mm -hmm. Swick, because they're like a supporter party too, but the SEALs, yeah. Raiders, and then Special Forces. Um, yeah. Then we've got SWIC, which primarily just supports... They're both... Don't get offended. Broad term here. <laughs> they're boat drivers. Nice. <laughs> Heist, they're Navy SEALs who drive boats. That's what they are. 
The um, badass Uber dudes. Badass Uber dudes. They'll integrate with primarily SEAL teams. I know some of them in, in, integrated with like SF dudes and then Marsoc dudes. I don't know anybody that I've mm. integrated with uh, Ranger Battalion guys. And what we got yeah. our, our good old Navy SEALs here, dude. You guys all know who they are. Then, oh, yeah, go ahead no, and hit no up the Raiders, bro. Yeah, no intro, go ahead and hit up your, your team over <laughs> here, bro. <laughs> so I will say I know a lot of dudes who went Raiders, and it's literally like, so the Marine Corps, especially the Marine Corps infantry, you, everybody knows them. You just get a lot of crazy people together, super testosterone-ridden, just all about <laughs> violence, and you take the best of those guys and put them in a unit, and that's exactly what the Raiders is, just hardcore dudes. Really, like, really cool dudes, though. Quiet. And then the PJs, dudes. I mean, the PJs will help other people, too, like Tier 3. They'll, they'll help them all the time. So PJs I, I, are everywhere. They are really T solid it, people. If you guys want to ask me who the most powerful fucking people are here on this tier two list, it's fucking uh, PJs. And that's because mm. PJs will directly support as well special forces, even though they have 18 deltas. They'll directly support SEALs. They'll directly support, you know, Raiders. They directly support Ranger Battalion. And then they directly support what you guys are going to see next is tier one units. And that's because mm. some of these fucking PJs, dude, these PJs are special forces, fucking Navy SEAL Ranger Battalion. Dudes, okay, <laughs> They literally hit the mark on everything, bro. And it's insane. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, you got green berets, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> 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 units, also known as Black Elements, consist oh of Delta Force, Dev Crew, 24th Special Tactics Squadron, Intelligence Support Activity, Ooh! Regimental Hell yeah. Pause that shit there again, though. Oh, there shit. Is. There it is. They did it. <laughs> Y'all are going to learn some, some new shit today. Like, uh, so they said Delta Force, number fucking one. Everyone's like, oh, SEAL Team 6, Navy SEAL. No, no. As y'all just found out, Navy SEALs. Are tier two or here let me let me stay in order so delta force yeah. technically special forces special forces operational detachment uh delta special forces is tier two but they have a component all right that is tier one um this is yeah. the easiest way for it to break it down i know a lot of you are gonna fucking get upset about this but based off of what i just said it will also fall into literally all of these other units and then feel free to correct me at any point in time. But yeah. what do you think? Do you think Delta Force is the the tip of the spear for the entire United States fucking fighting war, fighting functions, and all of the above? Well, so a lot of people, and you've seen, there's videos out there where they talk about these really, really special units. Some of them aren't really in, you know, in place so much. They're not really a factor. Yeah. But there are some really, really solid Delta guys that get up to throw to their own things and you'll sort of hear bits and pieces about that so i don't know if i can say with the certainty that there's anyone that's technically better like one specific unit but there's definitely some some hard-hitting guys that are really the tip of the spear but yeah you'll see dev crew again that's just part of the navy seals but the isa man it's kind of cool how oh they man here, here. this is something that i would love to dive into in the in the future uh, technically it's not even isa anymore uh no it is no it's really not yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to have to do a separate video on ISA, but for those of you who yeah, don't know, sure. those are your, like, spies. Those are the intelligence. If you guys have ever seen, like, Mile 22, the people, mother, the people who are in those computer chairs, like, analyzing all the com cameras <laughs> and, like, can see shit and all this stuff, that is how I would say ISA is. They're the uh, CIA uh, elite intelligence stuff uh, for... Right. The tier one units that like yeah. ISA is uh ISA would murder all, all of these tier one units. Even though I said <laughs> Delta is at the back, but like Delta, if Delta yeah. came for their life, they die. But they, the, ISA is plotting on everybody. Never yeah, trust those them guys bitches. are legit spooky. Yeah, spooky as fuck. We spooky definitely have to do a video fuck. on them. We are definitely gonna have to do a video on. So Naval Special Warfare Development Group. That's SEAL Team Six. Uh, but then Navy SEALs and uh, across the board are tier two. Um, mm -hmm. SEAL Team 6 is Tier 1. Now, if we go over here to, uh, you know, Special Tactics Squadron, you know how we talked about for the Air Force, um, there was, like, uh, combat controllers, and then there's, like, uh, PJs and, tech, like, all that shit? That is basically Special Tactics Squadron. That's uh, the Air Forces. It's all those dudes, mm -hmm. that elite dudes in those groups. 
put together, thrown in, in here. And that's a component. And then Ranger Battalion over here, there's a component inside of Ranger Battalion, because remember, Rangers <laughs> are tier two. That is a yeah. reconnaissance component, okay? Um, special, whatever, however you want to word it. But for those of you guys, the easiest way we can break it down is that all of these are special components in, inside of tier two that makes them tier one because they are so fucking high speed. And then like, however you right. would like word that, what, what do you think? Yeah, I would say it's it's pretty hard to explain for people who don't really have military experience or don't really understand the tiers, but I'm sure he's going to go a little bit more in depth in trying to explain it. But yeah, these guys are like, you have the, the spearhead. These guys are just the tip of that. So. Just the tip of it. Yep. Just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> what makes these, what's the difference between a tier one and tier two unit? Mission well, to pay. Those, yeah, more, for real. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Oh, we've just gotten into it and we've covered so much shit. But, yeah, I know. <laughs> we got to start doing these. Dude, goddamn. Yeah. We won't disguise our, our voices either. We don't disguise our voices. Military units don't really refer to themselves by their numbered tier. You don't see Navy SEALs or Army Rangers <laughs> referring to themselves as tier 2 units. Nor no. would you ever catch the 82nd Airborne calling themselves a tier 3 unit. The tier system Most don't even know that in the 82nd. Or wave nope. Organizing or marginal <laughs> Plus, they want you to think that they're tier 1 fact, units, so they won't say shit. <laughs> see the use of these yeah. terms out. You might be surprised to find this mm. out, but the different tiers generally have to do with funding. And it goes even deeper than that. <laughs> there you go, you it said it. With, if you give a team of 100 people $100 million, that's a million dollars a piece to gear them up for operations and missions. However, in scenario two, mm. if you give 10,000 people $100 million, that's only $10,000. Interesting way of putting it. Person. Scenario one's people will have some gnarly gear. In scenario two's people will have <laughs> hand me downs. And Here's the thing, yeah. though. You've these, <laughs> these people, the reason they have that funding though is because they've gone through these insane selection processes that you got the best guys with the best gear because you know they're not going to quit because they're going to be on the, the best missions, if that makes sense. Once again, we're, I'm just yeah, trying to make it make they're, sense. They're very, very highly vetted. So of course, you're not going to get people who don't know how to handle themselves and give them a bunch of money because then it's not going to end up too well. It's not a good investment, you know? Yeah. So you got to get these people that are really properly vetted and they've just been around and done that. So, yeah, you know, they're good people. And it's not also because the number like they said, like there's, oh, uh, 100 people here. And then there's like 100,000 people here. Like, no, it's because you have 100,000 people. And then you have let's if we're being fair, you know, 100 they're quality, quality people. <laughs> That's why the yeah. funding's going to them. Yeah. You pay for quality. Follow the 100%. Money. Following the money works the same way in the military. Tier one units get the most money, which in turn gets them the best gear, resources, and the best people to work in the units. And they don't While need the best gear either. Be the main difference right, the yeah. Tiers, That's a good caveat. There is a clear distinction in training and capabilities when you look at a tier one unit versus a tier three unit. If you're a SWAT officer, do officer, do not call yourself an operator. Army <laughs> okay, threw that in there. <laughs> the I like that. Least, some infantrymen can even become snipers, go to ranger Army school, and they still and have Marines. plenty of fulfilling career opportunities yeah. if the stars Infantry. align for them. Compare these guys to a Delta Force operator, though, which could very oh, well the beard. be <laughs> Mr. T, what's going, what's going on? <laughs> but the lines are blurred a little bit when you compare tier one to tier two. Tier yeah. 2 soft operators are still highly capable warriors in the battlefield and should not be mistaken to be completely inferior to every aspect of a tier 1 operator. Tiers 1 uh, and 2 have a lot of overlap in their skill sets. Uh, they elaborate a bit more. Yeah, so They're that's kind a of weird. Inferior, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I will say, generally speaking, those guys are in their position because of, you know, how fit they are, how knowledgeable they are, how mature they are, and everything. Of course, is you know, there might be some really solid just dudes in conventional infantry units i could probably stack up with one dude that's in like a tier one yeah, but no. generally speaking the ratio is is just not there dude it's so. it's, it's the fucking <laughs> legit one percent and then here's the other thing too is like i'm sorry i wish we could just take like five days to describe to you the shit that happens in that <laughs> tier one world but dude the reason they're tier one as well is because like when you have those tier two operators who are like thinking about making the leap to tier one Family, gone. Mm. Lifestyle, gone. <laughs> I'm not, yes. dude. If yeah, you guys yeah. meet these people in person, like Delta Operator, like yeah, they might seem cool, normal, but like they had to quite literally sacrifice everything. You're committed to that. That is your lifestyle at this point. Yeah, yeah, they're 100 percent in it. They're they're 100 percent in it, and they wouldn't. They don't. They're not questioning about you know whether they're willing to die 
for their country over their wife. They would they're they prefer the country <laughs> and and the, right. the, over their kids and their wife. That's why they're there. But guess what? That's why we fucking need them. Because there's people like myself. Yeah, I would like to say I would do something like that. But like w when you like, you know, come in at, like face to face with things like that, let's be honest. Would I if I had like a, a daughter or and a wife and a family and I said, "Hey, like mm. uh, we need you for this war." Let, come fight. Why doesn't everybody <laughs> fucking enlist and do that then when wars are <laughs> popping off? Like, dude, no, it, yeah, yeah. that's next level shit. Well, can yeah. you argue that tier one units are more capable and equipped than tier two units? They can't just be boiled down to being better. They have a more intense mission set. They have different objectives. Yes. And they serve different purposes. Tier one units compose of the best of the best of the tier two units. Tier two units consist of soft operators from your typical soft That's units. That's very good explanation. And then tier three units are considered mm -hmm. as large and conventional warfare units. Yes. Now okay. The wow. There you go. Very good. That, he's at it. Do you have to move up the tier system? Do you have to go from tier three to tier two? Okay. Nah. Yeah. No. No. Really. You can jump from a tier three unit into a tier one unit. Hard. The force has been known to. Hard. Very, very hard. Very you need to be hard. A, a stud or really have impressed someone. But it is a good point. So a lot of people will be like, hey, how do I go from being a civilian to going straight into like Dev Guru or Delta? You can't. It's probably not going to happen. No, that will uh, happen. Just, but once you're in. Yeah, so it's, it's okay to do some of like the slower speed stuff at first and then move your way up. You're going to want to get that experience in the first place. You're not going to want to go from being a civilian to going to tier one, <laughs> unless Yo, you're like, Lord. you've literally been trained by them. <laughs> you're, like, you're... like a Spartan. <laughs> Psycho, yeah, dude. Oh, like the, the majority, the only few ways I've seen people go from tier three to tier one is like in two instances. Um, they've been tier three for a few years um and there's so maybe in the future we should we should sit down and talk about this because i have emails mm. so i'm not fucking bragging about shit everybody gets this <laughs> so when you have a couple deployments and like all this other shit depending on where you're at and like your mos and shit sometimes you get these emails and it's from even though they're supposed to be super secret from delta mm. as a broad term first special forces group operational De detachment delta will send out a mass email to um, it's all, you have to be E5 and above with like, uh, a certain time in service. Okay. And you'll get this email and they'll be like, Hey, you know, uh, there will be a recruiter here on this day. We'd love for you to come and check it out. These are the prerequisites. So I got this email one day. I was like, Oh my God, bro. I'm the fucking best. High speed. Da, 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 da. And then like, you know, a couple of people were like, Oh yeah, I got it too. Some couple other high speeds and you got it too. And I was like, okay. And I did my research mm -hmm. and it's a very broad thing. So you can Get the paperwork. You can go and actually quite literally go to this selection process where they try out, but it's not like Delta tryouts. It's a like tryout thing. Then there's like another thing. Then there's like, you know, so on and so forth. I wouldn't know mm. that part and beyond because I haven't gotten there. But I know a lot of people who gotten those emails. I know two people who have gotten those emails and they're doing their thing right now. <laughs> and I can't speak on that because goddamn Delta is like the one unit I know where everyone just shuts the fuck up and doesn't talk about anything unless you're you're one of the boys. And then the other ones is I know Ranger bad dudes who will be going through RASP and then, or no, it wasn't RASP, SFAS, and then one got pulled up to go for tryouts midway through for the unit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy fuck. And now he's doing cool guy shit. I know one instance where there was someone who was supporting a tier one unit from a tier three sort of, I guess, assignment, and they got pulled over because they really liked what they were seeing. So I've seen that one time that's probably super super rare you yeah. typically need extensive experience in a tier 2 soft unit before you're able to try out or be recruited into a tier 1 unit you really only see people getting recruited straight into a tier 1 unit in the movies so don't think that seal team <laughs> are knocking on your door 100% interested while support personnel might not be doing the coolest job out there, they are a necessity and highly relied on. SEALs can oh, get actually, the job that's done good. without their Not everyone can be an operator, but operators can't do everything. <laughs> oh While the roles God. and specific jobs of support your personnel belt, widely though. vary, Fuck. they typically I know, it's got everything. Logistics, is this even Army? U.S. Army? Or is this like... I, I feel like this is like the SAS or some shit. And Dev Group. So if oh, it is American. I don't know. It is American. Yeah, so that was a good point, what he said about the numbers is you're not going to need a bunch of people in these specific units. You want really small group, a tight group of guys. If you have like a bunch of people, it just gets muddled. The funding doesn't get, you know, dispersed as much. So you want to get a small group of quality people. So I think it's important that he's saying you're not going to take all of these people in. Tier three need more people because they have larger missions 
while tier one are more spearheaded to specific things. So yep, it was a good point. He had a lot of good points. And I think he did a pretty good job of explaining the differences. That w- it was, and it was very actually it was simplified like really, really, really well. I would love to know what everybody like. I would love to know who didn't know what units existed, because I know all of y'all basically yeah. just break it down to Navy SEALs and special forces like that. That's really it. People don't know or not even Navy <laughs> Se- they like no Navy SEALs, SEAL Team Six, and special forces. Um, but right. as y'all can see, like there are some like the, the, it, to y'all might right now might be like there are some like spooky people out there that y'all don't hear about every day that yeah. will just dominate those like other like, you know, branches and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And don't get it twisted. There's definitely some people that aren't going to be in videos because we're just not going to know about them. So yeah. it is kind of cool. It's cool to learn about these guys, especially, especially for people who are trying to join the military. Yeah. Cause again, it really depends on what you're trying to do. But it's totally okay to go and do some of the dirty work before you go into some of the the sexier stuff. It's yeah. not going to be that fun going from, you know, something to where you need to be super relied upon and you don't really know what you're doing. They're not going to do it like that. Yeah, and a lot of places won't won't take you until the. They say you can try out. Trying out means you know sending in a packet, um, and they won't right. take you unless you meet a lot of the prerequisites like you know two deployments, E five and above, mm. and like all these other things. But uh, yeah, like you said, like I hope this this is a good video, and I think it might you know spark a flame in like some of the people who didn't know what type of shit was out there, and like, hey, you can go above yeah. and beyond. There is stuff beyond what you think is out there, especially in the Intel community. The fact that they mentioned ISA was uh, very cool because y'all can look that up mm-hmm. right now. You ain't gonna find no live videos of ISA. <laughs> you ain't gonna find a single one. That's probably why a lot of people haven't heard about them. Yeah, it was cool that they threw them in there. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, but. You'll see this with other militaries too. For example, like the British military, you have the Royal Marine Commandos, which are like, I would say probably equivalent to tier two, but then you have the special boat service, which pulls from the Royal Marine Commandos. So you have a bunch of, you you sort of see this mirrored. It's not like unique to the US as far as having like this sort of tier list and selectiveness. Good video. And then let us know down below in the comments if you guys want us to cover like some of these like individually. Um, cause I'd mm. love to dive into some of them and spread some more knowledge to all of you. And I, yeah, yeah. I know you'd like to as well because uh, yeah, especially the ISA. yeah, yeah, that'd be a fun one. Uh, let us yeah. know and ask us questions down below in the comments. All right. That's it team. Once again, much love from Theo over at combat arms channel. Feel free to go check him out. Um, we are going to be doing some more collaborations in the future and some very cool ones. And you guys are going to find out some stuff about Theo and myself that I promise you didn't know. As always, if you guys like this type of comment, like this type of comment yo what the fuck? if you guys like this type of content go ahead and click that like button if you guys don't like it go ahead and dislike the video but let me know down below in the comments so i can fix or improve for your guys entertainment if you guys want to see more of the videos we post two to three times a week so go ahead and click that subscribe and notification bell let me know down below in the comments as well uh if you guys didn't expect to see you know some of the units that were here what new unit did you guys learn about and what unit was in a tier that you didn't think was there but uh yeah thanks for stopping by